Food is a favorite part of traveling for many. For us, it's the part we hate. Why? Because whether it's plant-based, gluten-free, nut-free, macrobiotic, or simply 100% organic food, no other city we've been to, neither domestically nor abroad, offers as many good restaurants which cater to these health-conscious categories as our hometown of Los Angeles. Yet almost all of those fabulous restaurants ignore the elephant in the room acrylamide and other advanced glycation end products. They will proudly tout their $20 appetizer-sized entree of chicken, raised free-range without antibiotics or added hormones, and then sear it above an open flame. Look how perfect those grill marks are the waiter will exclaim. Though, the vegan restaurants are arguably the worst offenders. Organic or not, the restaurants selling more traditional cuisine are casting their net for a wider audience. They're not as concerned about health, let alone specialized diets. Vegan restaurants are and given their specialized focus, with all the hoops they jump through, one would think they would be extra cognizant of health-related issues. Especially since, contrary to what many believe, health is the single most cited reason people go vegan. The hardcore animal rights and paramilitary PETA protesters are the exception, not the norm. However, so many vegan restaurants, your choices are limited if you are looking for ways of how to avoid acrylamide in food. Much of it is charred. Burnt crusts and bread are the norm, even when requested otherwise. Likewise for roasted slash fried potatoes and gluten-free muffins at Sunday brunch. All delicious, but not always healthy. Acrylamide. You don't need a PhD in biochemistry to understand why acrylamide is considered potentially dangerous and harmful to your health. Is acrylamide in raw foods? Mostly not. It's primarily formed when some types of food are cooked at high temperatures, at about 250 degrees Fahrenheit and above. Certain cooking methods in particular have been proven to dramatically increase the production of acrylamide because they create focused areas of ultra-high heat on the food. These include grilling, frying, and broiling. It can also be formed at lower temperatures, even below 212 degrees Fahrenheit, under drying conditions, too. That can make baking problematic too, since it can be both drying and high heat. Think about it. When you throw a slab of meat or veggie burger on the grill, the actual metal surface reaches much higher temperatures than the inside of your steak or hamburger patty. That's why on the outside of the meat, you get those charred black grill marks, which ironically, many people find highly desirable. Reasons why is it bad for you? We could go into gobbledygook filled, long-winded scientific explanation of why this chemical formula, C3H5 no, poses a significant health risk to most life forms, humans included. We could cite a bajillion studies and white papers. But instead, let's just explain it in layman's terms. You often hear headlines of how acrylamide causes cancer, is a neurotoxin, and so forth. Though the warnings often fail to provide a simple explanation of why that is. Articles will blabber on and on, without ever providing a dumbed-down elevator pitch of why. The reason why, which anyone can understand, can really be summed up in a just a few sentences. DNA mutation graphic acrylamide will bind to your DNA to form what is called an adduct. An adduct is a segment of your DNA which is chemically bonded to a cancer-causing chemical. In other words, this chemical interrupts the natural metabolic process of your DNA. That can be a problem if in doing so, it causes the DNA to mutate. DNA mutations are never good, but not all cause cancer. In fact, you have them daily and your body does a very good job at repairing them. Fewer than 1 out of 1000 mutations are permanent, the rest are discarded by the body. Even when our body misses them and they become permanent, the effects will most likely never be detected, or at least, the mutations may contribute to aging, but not cancer, according to the mutation theories of aging. However once in a while, a DNA mutation can go out of control, replicating itself exponentially into a mass of other mutated cells before our body stops it. That's what we call cancer. So when a type of DNA adduct, a type of chemical that binds to your DNA, has been shown to trigger mutations which lead to cancer, we call those cancer-causing chemicals or carcinogens. You could be diagnosed with cancer today, stemming from a DNA mutation that happened 10 or 15 years ago, if not longer. For example, how long it takes for breast cancer to be detected after formation is estimated to be 6 to 8 years, before it can even be felt or seen on a mammogram. The very slow nature of cancer growth is what makes proving their cause so difficult, for any suspected carcinogens. It's the reason why the tobacco industries could skate by scot-free for the latter half of last century, because they could argue the conclusive proof wasn't quite there. And you could argue that mindset is no different than the people today who say acrylamide causing cancer is a myth. Not because it's proven false, but rather because they say there isn't enough proof. 
To further complicate matters, acrylamide is not some obscure chemical used in industrial applications, though it is used there too, including in the wastewater recycling process. Rather, we're talking about a substance which affects even more people than cigarettes. Even at its heyday, the mid-1950s, only 45% of Americans smoked. But 100% of Americans eat food. Minimize acrylamide in food. To simply present you a list of foods with acrylamide would be ineffective, since it is practically found in almost everything. Not even plain water is necessarily free of it, since water purification is one of the most prevalent industrial uses of this chemical. It's also found in moderate levels in foods you may not expect, such as instant coffee, ripe pitted olives, and Gerber tender harvest organic sweet potatoes. So you can't eliminate it entirely, though you can greatly reduce your consumption by limiting your intake of foods that are high in acrylamide or changing how you cook them. You've already heard some of the cooking methods more likely to produce it. Grilling. Frying. Broiling. Baking. With baking it's primarily at high temperatures in it or when the food is dry. Though it's really more important to understand what causes it to form with those types of cooking. Asparagine. It is a not essential amino acid, it's a building block of protein. When it reaches high temperatures, such as during the aforementioned cooking methods, it can produce acrylamide. Asparagine takes its name from asparagus. Not because it's the highest food source, but rather that was the source used for isolating it from in 1806. Three years later it was given its name. It was the first amino acid ever isolated from its natural source. The foods highest in asparagine have the potential to be the worst offenders. It's not that you need to cut them out of your diet entirely, but rather take careful consideration in how they are prepared, as to minimize the formation. Potatoes are case in point. You may have heard browning and deep fried potatoes are cancerous, however you don't have to make them that way. Potato chips on the other hand, there's no way around that train wreck. Good rule to remember, higher amount of carbohydrates equals higher potential for acrylamide. It's not just as simple as creating a list of high asparagine foods because how much or how little acrylamide formation there is depends largely on cooking slash production methods. A food could have a lot of asparagine, yet little acrylamide because it was consumed in its raw form. Acrylamide formation does tend to be significantly higher in carbohydrates, which come from plants. Very little is in meat and dairy. Unfortunately though, this doesn't mean omnivores have less to worry about. If you enjoyed this video, kindly press the like button. Also don't forget to subscribe with notifications on, so that you don't miss out on videos like this. Thank you for watching.